Hi friends, it's Mrs. Perez and I have another story for you. This one's called Hedgy Surprise and it's written and illustrated by Jan Brett. See Hedgy there? That must be his friend, a hen. When I'm finished reading this story, we're going to retell it together. And what that means is we're going to think about what happened at the beginning and the middle and the end of the story and we're going to say it in our own words. All right, let's read Hedgy's Surprise. Hedgy Surprise by Jan Brett. See the little hen? That must be her hen house. Once there was a speckled hen who laid eggs every day, only to have it taken by a little Tomton every morning. It all started because the Tomton got tired of porridge for breakfast. Now this must be a Tomton. That's his porridge. Does he like porridge? Not so much. He wants to have eggs for breakfast. That's right. Each morning, the rooster crowed as the sun came up, and Henny knew that the Tomton was on his way. So did the little hedgehog, who lived nearby. The Tomton always called out to her, Henny, have you got a little yummy for my hungry, hungry tummy? And there he goes into the hen house to fetch some eggs. The Tomton climbed into the hen house, took Henny's warm, smooth egg, and ran off to cook it in his little kettle and sprinkle it with salt and gobble it down. And then he fell fast asleep in the hayloft until evening. There's his kettle in that little window. Henny didn't like the Tomton taking her eggs, but she put up with it until one morning when she saw Goosey Goosey sail forth, smiling and bowing with a stream of piping goslings following her. Oh, I wonder what she's thinking. There's the little Tomton sleeping. My, Henny clucked, where did all those little ones come from? My eggs are hatching, crooned Goosey Goosey. Here comes the last one now. And from that moment on, Henny wanted a brood of peeping chicks of her own. But how could she stop the Tomton from taking her eggs? Oh, I see. So Henny wants to keep her eggs, so they'll hatch. Does she want the Tomton to take them? No. The next morning, when the Tomton poked his head in, Henny tried. She clucked loudly and pecked. She flew at him, but nothing stopped that hungry Tomton from taking her egg again. So that didn't help. He still took the egg. No eggs, no chicks, no peeping babies. Henny wailed so loudly that she woke up the little hedgehog, her tears pouring down the top of him. Puffa puffa, stick stick, Hedgy went as he crawled out to talk to her. Poor Henny, I've been watching the Tomton take your eggs. I'll help you trick him into stopping. <gasps> Ooh. Going to work out a plan to trick the Tomton? Well, the next morning, when the rooster crowed, there was the Tomton. Henny, have you got a little yummy for my nearly empty tummy? Henny and Hedgy were ready. The Tomton reached for an egg and pulled out an acorn. Hmm, said the Tomton. What's this? And off he went to try it. The acorn was tasty, but it didn't fill him up, and he awoke in the middle of the afternoon grumpy. So, what did Henny and Hedgy put in her nest? Yes, that's called an acorn. Did it fill up the Tomton's tummy? It did not. Well, the next time the Tomton arrived looking for an egg, 
he found a bright red strawberry. It looked bigger than the acorn, so he ran off to cook it. The strawberry was jammy and sweet, but he only filled up the Thompson a little more than the acorn had, and he woke up early. So the acorn didn't fill his tummy, and the strawberry didn't fill his tummy. Is he going to come back for more? The sun had just come up when the Tomtin was at the hen house again, his stomach roaring with hunger. Pushing Honey aside, he grabbed for an egg, only to find a delicious smelling mushroom. He raced off to cook it, and as scrumptious as it was, he woke up with his little tummy growling for more. So the mushroom didn't fill up his tummy either. Cock-a-doodle! The Tomtin rushed in before the rooster even finished crowing. Honey, have you got something for my hollow, hollow tummy? This time, he found a smooth, round potato, even bigger than an egg. He cooked it quickly, swallowed it down, and went back to his hayloft. He woke up at sunset, only half full. The Tomtin had had enough. Honey, he shouted, tomorrow I want an egg for breakfast and nothing else. If I don't find one, I'll eat you up instead. Uh-oh. Does he want an acorn? No. Does he want a strawberry? No. Does that Tomtin want a mushroom? No. Will he want a potato? No. What does that Tomtin want? That's right. He wants an egg. Henny was scared. The Tomtin had been tricked by an acorn, a strawberry, a mushroom, and a potato. How could they fool him again? Don't worry, Henny, Hedgie told her. Now it is time for my surprise. And he whispered in her ear, all night, Henny waited on her nest and Hedgie on his. As soon as it began to get light, Hedgie gently covered his nest with straw and got ready for the surprise. And look in the window. Who's on his way to the hen house? Yes, that greedy little Tomton. Henny and Hedgie could hear that Tomton's stomach rumbling like thunder a mile away. He burst into the hen house, pushed Henny aside, and grabbed. Ow! He howled. Ow! Ow! Puffa, puffa, stick, stick. He had clutched Hedgie, all closed up in a tight round ball of needle sharp prickles. So, did he get an egg? No. What was the surprise? It was Hedgie. Ouch! Henny and Hedgie listened as the Tomton ran home, yowling. Oh, thank you, Hedgie, Henny said, looking at her dear friend. I'm sure that Tomton won't be back here again for breakfast. But what I can't figure out is, where have you hidden my eggs? Oh, where are her eggs? Just then, Henny heard a little peep and then another coming from Hedgie's nest. She looked over and saw the straw begin to move. Five baby chicks peeked out of their shells and fluffed up their down. As Henny settled down with her babies nestled all around her, the Tom Tom's mother was in the hayloft making breakfast for her hungry Tomton. So what happened to her eggs? Yes, they were able to hatch because the Tom Tom didn't eat them this time. Hedgie, 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 you are full of surprises, Henny cried as she led her baby chicks out into the sunshine. But the little Tom Tom didn't hear a word. He was sound asleep, his tummy full of tasty porridge. I sure do like Jambrette's stories, don't you? 
Okay, now let's go ahead and retell the story. Let's say what happens in the story. Start at the beginning. What happened at the beginning of the story? Henny lays eggs. Do they get a chance to hatch? No. So Henny's eggs don't hatch because who takes them? Yes, the Tomton takes them. So at the beginning of the story, Henny's laying her eggs and the Tomton keeps coming and taking her eggs. And she was fine with it until one day she saw her friend, the goose. And she saw all those baby goslings following behind. She wanted babies all of her own, didn't she? She sure did. So she and Hedgie hatched a plan. Okay, now at the middle of the story, this is where they carry out their plan, don't they? So when the Tomton comes in for an egg, what does he get instead? An acorn, that's right. So Tomton came in for the egg, but he got an acorn. And next, Tomton got a strawberry instead. And when he came back again, he found a mushroom. He was being tricked, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And then the Tomton came back and found a potato in its place. And do you remember what he told Henny? He said, if I don't get an egg, I'm going to eat you, right? Okay, so then Hedgy had another plan. He had a surprise. So the next time Hedgy or er, Tomton came back, he reached in to grab an egg. And what did he get? Yes, he got a handful of a hedgehog, a prickly pokey hedgehog, didn't he? Yeah, and he ran home. And at the very end of the story, Henny's eggs hatch and the baby chicks. And do you think that Tomton ever came back looking for her eggs? Maybe not, huh? I think he learned his lesson. And that's the end of the story. Now, see if you can retell that story to your family. Think about what happens at the beginning and in the middle and at the end of the story and tell it in your own words. All right, see you back real soon. Ciao for now.